Welcome back to the channel. We've got many lessons to learn on this episode and a lot of rust to remove. If this is the kind of content that you're interested in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as there are new episodes every Wednesday and Sunday. On this episode, we'll be working on the side of the bus to get it all ready for epoxy primer so it no longer has to sit as bare metal. There is a lot of rust that needs to be removed though, so let's get right into the work. One of the first things that I wanted to fix was the rusty windowsill. That's why I got my thickest wire wheel and got to grinding. Sometimes what looks like just a little rust pit ends up turning into a hole. So I'd made sure to go over it really well with the wire wheel just to expose anything that might potentially be a hole. I let it sit with some OSFO and as you can see there are some spots that weren't holes before that are holes now. After the OSFO set for a little bit I went over it with the carbide disc and it was looking pretty clean and I was ready to cut out my patches. But before I got into that, I saw this little dent that I wanted to hammer out. Little did I know what was going to end up happening when I used my hammer and dolly. As I'm going to warn you, if you don't know how to use a hammer and dolly, don't use it until you learn. So in that last time lapse, I spent some time hammer and dollying this section to get this dent out. And since I don't know how to use a hammer and dolly, what I ended up doing was this. Now I am not classically trained in body work, so I had no idea what that was called, but I knew it was a problem. Looked it up and turns out they call it oil canning. And it, it could be caused by uh, hammer and dolling it so much that you stretch your metal. I've looked and done my research and one of the solutions is heating up a little cherry in the center, smacking it and kind of shrinking the metal by um, moving it towards that soft spot and then cooling it with a wet rag. So we're gonna give that a shot and uh, hopefully this little mistake I've made can teach you guys a valuable lesson in body work. So I'm no fan of using this as I, I've not used it very much. Actually, I've never used this tip. This is a Harbor Freight um, set and uh, hopefully we don't blow up. You don't want to be in here, Jim. Why is it hissing for so long? <laughs> Was that supposed to be hissing like that? I don't know what I'm doing. Oh my god, we'll get somebody that does, can we? <laughs> All right, take two. I'm in the line of fire here. You're pointing that thing right at me. Okay. Is that leaking? What's that noise? How about we just use it so we can be... Oh, there we go. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I think I might figure out how to use the torch now. Let's Just gotta find the center of the situation. So I'm gonna go with like, we're gonna start here. I'm gonna shrink maybe there. Hopefully I don't just blow a hole straight through there. <laughs> We've got our bucket of cold water, our wet rag. We're gonna heat a dime sized area in there. Then we're gonna attempt to shrink it. now but now we're gonna do it like right here sometimes it takes more than one I saw that online It's not going anywhere. Now, I'm gonna look up how to use the hammer and dolly correctly and flatten this out. Although I think this will be best done with like a spoon from what I've seen. It's not doing the pop pop, but that's still got too much oil canning for 
We'll work on it. I'll get it in the time lapse because this is going to take a while. Perfect. So we have gotten rid of the tin canning. That is just about as solid as any other part on this door, but it is a little dinged up. It's pretty flat. I could just bondo over that. It's a lot flatter than it was, but I'm gonna attempt to hone my craft and try to hammer that smoother. So we're gonna clean up this surface, clean up the backside and, you know, take our time with it. tin canning. It's not perfectly smooth, um, but it doesn't have any huge dips or bumps, so I should be able to just put some filler. I might try to learn a few more techniques on smoothing it out, but at this point I don't really want to stretch the metal again and risk tin canning it, so I'm happy with that. Well, now that that whole ordeal was over and done with, I could move on to what I originally intended to do in this episode, which is repair the rust on the windowsill. Now, if you have any questions about the techniques that I use, feel free to leave it in the comments down below, but I'll give you a simple explanation of the way that I like to do it. I cut out the rust, anything that's pitted as a whole, I do my best to cut it all out because rust never sleeps and it won't come back. I'll cut out my repair section a little bit oversized and then using a flappy disc, I'll go ahead and trim down the sides until it's a perfect fit. Now I am using the funky green panel cutoffs as it is really good metal and I had it laying around. And then with any MIG welding on thin sheet metal, you want to space your tacks apart, grind it down, and then fill in any gaps until you have a perfectly sealed surface. Now take your time with the sanding as you don't want to overheat the metal and you don't want to eat away too much at your material and you end up getting a pretty smooth finish. Now little holes like this, I'll use a piece of brass, put it up behind, and I will seal it up with weld until basically anything that's rusted will blow through and you'll reach to the clean metal and it works out so that I don't have to cut out this tiny little section. That's the way I do it. I don't know if it's recommended, but it turns out pretty good. And the same thing with this, cut it out, make my little repair section, tack it in carefully so that I don't overheat it, warp it or anything, sand it down and it's nice and smooth. Now it has taken me quite a bit of practice to even get to this point, which I wouldn't say is really good, but it's a lot better than when I started. And my biggest piece of advice is to make sure that you have all your settings dialed in on your welder. You got to have it hot enough so it penetrates the metal. I used about the second highest setting on my MIG welder. And you want to make sure that your wire speed is correct so you're not building up a whole bunch on the surface or well, blowing a hole through it. Once you have your settings figured out, it just takes practice. Same deal, sanding it down, getting it nice and smooth, filling in any little holes, and boom, you're left with a pretty smooth, nice repair. Now with anything that was once rusted or had pitting, I like to use POR15. And POR15 is all about the prep work. You wanna make sure that your surface is ready for the adhesion of the POR15. That is why I like to make sure that there is no loose material on the surface, and then I will use the POR15 metal prep. Um, this kind of neutralizes the rust. You can see all those little black dots are where there was rust and it's now neutralized. And when you leave it there long enough, like the instructions tell you to, you'll actually get a bit of surface rust, which is what you want as POR15 adheres better to a surface that is rough than a smooth surface. Now use wax and grease remover to wipe that down and then it's ready to use a POR15. I'm using semi-gloss as it will be easier to paint over it when I go to epoxy prime this panel. I do have to scuff it and I have POR15 etching primer to put over it, but make sure you read all your details before you use this because I've seen a lot of people complain about it not being good. It's great stuff, you just have to use it correctly. Hope you enjoyed the video, we're all out of time. Don't forget to check out our stickers, our merch, and I will see you in the next one.